Hey everybody, it's Maria from What's the Story with Maria. How's it going? Thank you for joining us tonight. Tonight is Tuesday, October 15th, 2024. Leo, hit that promo. Yeah, I'm a big fish, small bar, day spring. So welcome back to our show tonight. Tonight we have an amazing guest. He does everything. And he's got his uh he's got his hands in everything and behind the scenes. And we had an amazing conversation this week on the phone. His name is Adam Weinstock, and he is a producer of many, many, many things all over the country and uh in London. And so he's gonna have some great stories to tell. And we're very much looking forward to having him on. He is also a Libra, and this is Libra season. You are in Libra season. So if you love a Libra, like I do, and many of us do, you know what that means. It's They are really fun, smart, sharp people. And um, uh, we have so many Libra friends. So this is a good time to have a birthday. And if you're going to birthday parties, it's a good time. This is my favorite time of the year, fall. A lot of things are going on. Uh, I got to say, I'm a little tense about the election, but I'm still hopeful and joyful. It's just 22 days to go. So let me see who's joined us. 22 days to go to the big the big show. Danielle Alexandria Alchemy has joined us, and she is a psychic, a medium, a spiritual healer. Um, she does past life regressions. She does spirit animal readings. She's, you're going to, if you find Danielle, and I hope you do at DanielleAlexandriaAlchemy.com, Leo has it up there, you are going to find many wonderful things and you are going to feel fantastic if you check in with Danielle. Uh, and actually last year for Christmas, this is something good to think about for Christmas. I got a lot of gift certificates and it was a really nice gift. Uh, some of them were spirit animals, some of them were past life, I mean, uh, were you know, talking to the other side, psychic readings, amazing. So that is something I highly recommend for a very original gift. Lori Towers has joined us, my favorite night with my favorite peeps. Well, I feel the same way. I mean, although your show is Wednesday nights and uh, that is amazing. I'm just working on Wednesday, so I can't catch it live. I catch it in, um, in repeat, which is great because there's a link you can click on. John Piatero, I'm horrified about the election. I know. Trump's twisted voice is killing me. Can I tell you something? I, I can't wait for that week to end. I'm not going to say that night because we all know how that goes, but that week to end so I can finally exhale. Um, and Leo, oh, Leo, you got your voting shirt on. You are the, uh -huh. good, the good luck charm. I have my Kamala shirt on tonight. There is, yes, it's, there's Kamala, a Libra, of course. And Sunday is. Hey, your colors. <laughs> Match our banner up there on the T-shirt. Oh, yes, they do. I think that's on purpose. I don't know if it's on purpose. But um, anyway, why don't you talk about John and um, Lori and the wonderful stuff that they do on Wednesday night since you are you listen live and are involved. Every Wednesday. I, lo I love to do it. As soon as I get out of cabaret class, which I have, I turn it off and I'm like, okay, everybody, got to go. And I get in the car and I put on WFMU, Sheena's Jungle Room, and I'm driving home for only five minutes. But I usually catch them right as they're ending the first set. Ooh. So then I get to hear. I get, and I know that they're going to love to talk about the Coachella experience with Trump this week. Did you hear about that? Oh, no. Coachella is just right uh, down the road. I did hear me. about it, but please, will you talk about it? Coachella is right down the mountain from me. It's a big music festival, everything. Had some of my high school friends, they were there. They posted pictures of themselves there. Then it posts pictures after the two-hour walk that they had to make after they were stranded at the venue because Mr. Sorry, dipshit didn't put uh didn't pay for the buses to get everybody back from the venue. So they went camping, they did whatever they did, they got on a bus. 
drove two hours away to this venue or whatever it was or where the venue was. And then all the buses left except for one. Right. Only one was paid for. And over 2,000 people, however many were there, had to walk back or wait for this bus. And it was like a two-hour walk. Thanks, President. I know you're going to be looking out for all of us, right? Oh, thank yeah. you so much. And they said one of the reasons that that was done that way was so they couldn't leave. Because you know how Kamala said at the uh, at the, the debate, well, people are leaving your your rallies anyway. He didn't want people to leave. And that's what happened. So I don't want people to leave. Anyway, okay. So we got John and um and so, yeah, tomorrow night they'll be on Wednesday night, Sheena's Jungle Room. Okay. Right? WFMU.org beneath the underground. Join us for some great music. Also, another famous leaver, Jerry Dixon, who uh Broadway star, also a director, and he is married to our wonderful friend, Mario Cantone, who is my friend from high school and famous actor and comedian. As a matter of fact, I saw Jerry and Mario this past Wednesday, they came into the duplex. And um, so happy birthday, Jerry Dixon. And Mario is doing something really cool right now, the creepy cinema. So he, yeah, there it is. So TMC's creepy cinema, Every Thursday, I believe, at uh, what does that start at 7 p.m. I think. Mm -hmm. it's TCM Turner Classic Movies Creepy Cinema. Yep, and and Mario picks the movies. He gets to pick yep. the movies, and then in between little takes, they do talk about it. And they're usually and classic, older, great, um, great little. He tends to to lean that way, like classic movies. So it's that every Thursday in October, every Thursday at 8 p.m. Uh, okay. Eastern with Ben Mankiewicz, who is yeah. oh, he's a great documentarian. He, he really about movies is. and stuff. He really is. So we got that is something really fun to do in October. Also, um, our friends, um, well, our friend Karen Mack, who it, it is Cookie Month. You know, she makes cookies every cookie single Mac. day. She makes a different cookie. And then she posted on her Facebook wall and she's fantastic. We love her. So we want to give a special shout out to those girls, which is the band that it's a girls group that she is in. And um, they are playing at Pangea this Thursday, October 17th at 7 PM. And their sound is so beautiful. It's four uh, amazing Rachel Eden. Um, who am I forgetting? Eve, maybe no Eve. Eve. Rachel. Karen, and there's one more that I'm forgetting, but um, I'll think of it in a minute. But anyway, those those, the, those are those girls, and they are at Pangea this, this week. This Thursday, 7 p.m., and Pangea, I believe, is on 11th Street and 2nd Avenue. That's a sweet little club. Go and check them out. And Karen uh, plays there quite a bit with Elliot Roth, who I believe right now, though, Elliot Roth, and James Jackson are in Provincetown. They are playing Provincetown this week because it's Women's Week. So all our friends are doing things all over the place. Also, speaking of Karen Mack, she has a new album out. And um, go to bandcamp.com. It's a new site that really uh, houses songwriters and uh, everybody's raving about it. It's really great. So go and check that out. Let's see who's checked in. Rick... Sudi Rick Caritas, I love, I love cookies. I know, except the ones that are, uh, what? What does that mean? We don't know what, okay, maybe we'll. we'll take oh, it. we know how internet, when you oh. have the, we, show, we do our cookies now, accept them so they oh. get all your information. So oh. if you disable your cookies, they can't steal your info. That's what he's talking oh, about. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't, I'm not as smart as you. Wow, okay. And Lynn says, hi guys. Hey honey, how are you? So uh, let me see who else we've missed. Did Rena Crignali? Oh, the weather girl is here. Yes, Rena Crignali Berge, my cousin, um, and our family project manager from Massachusetts is here, and she also enjoys fall greatly. So that is what's oh. happening. Big shout out to my girlfriend Judy Mesa. Tomorrow. Your uh, your gang leader from uh, when you were in high school is on now. Um, Gene Simpson Dunn. Gene Simpson Dunn is joined. So happy birthday to Judy. Tomorrow is her birthday. 
So everybody, big shout out to Sen as Leo calls her Senator Mesa. Uh, Senator Mesa has been tearing up the TikTok, Ms. Well, Senator she, Mesa. Yes, she has been tearing up the TikTok. You are not kidding. And they're really, some of them are, are really funny. Some of them are very serious, but some of them are really funny. She made one today that was, I mean, they're all funny. So go and check her out. She's under YM Grad on TikTok. Um, anyway, Leo, uh, do we have our friend in the wings? He is not in yet, but I, can we show a sure sign of the weather? You could do anything you want. Since we had the weather girl telling us that it's going to be nice and crisp, here's a little bit of crispness oh, wow. for our weather. Oh, <laughs> my goodness. So that is Zach and Braley. This is our nothing but the apron calendar that we come out with every year. And this is October, of course. We get our friends. Trick or treat. Yes. we Look at how they hoist up their apron, though. Do you, you uh -huh. know, the aprons are longer than that. Because when I looked at these pictures, I was like, guys, by any chance, did you tape those aprons up? And they were like, uh, yeah, we did. We wanted to show off our legs really hard on them. So, Remember what Sister Leo said about hiking up your aprons? What did Last Sister Leo he... Listen, she knows. She knows. Um, anyway, I'm just making sure you check in this way. Ready to go. Let's see where, what our friends are saying. So Danielle says, um, uh, I saw that part. Happy birthday to Judy. Yes, it's Libra season. Uh, so Danielle says happy birthday to Judy. John says, uh, I, Trump's twisted voice is killing me. I know. I, I am baffled. I am not going to beat this to death, but I am completely baffled by anybody that still thinks that this is a good idea. Um, a land of... Yep. Okay. I'm just checking what everybody. Maria, wants. The Eagle has landed Maria. Okay. Beautiful. And uh, Lori is watching it. Okay. We watch it every Thursday. So the creepy cinema, Mario and Ben. Yeah. And, and TMC, TCM. <laughs> I love it. He's great. By the and way, Mario said he is almost done with, and just like that, he's got three more shooting days and then he's going to come on the show. He can't wait to come on the show, but uh, he's not going to zoom in. He's going to come to my apartment. And, uh, I thought I yeah. saw some uh, some uh, some leaks about him having a relationship in this new uh, in this new one. Yeah, it ended, yeah, it ended last time with a. They gave him a relationship this time, which is really great. But you know, he and Jerry have been together for thirty three years. He and his husband Jerry, um, they've been married for maybe eleven, but they've been together a long, long time. Gene Simpson Dunn says hello. Carlos not did uh, job such or okay. Good question to Gavin Creel, which is so sad. He was an incredibly talented Broadway star. Passed away, sadly, two weeks ago. Visit your job sites or bar, Maria. Yes, as a matter of fact, uh, and thanks for asking, Carlos. We, there was an amazing um, fundraiser at the Stonewall Inn for uh, Stonewall Inn uh, Gives Back Initiative, maybe about six years ago. And we had a, 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 a like an array of amazing people, and da uh, Gavin Creel was one of them, along with Sarah Bareilles, uh, uh, Tyler, for, uh, uh, Jamie Tyler, uh, uh, Tyler, Tyler yes, and then a little little girl named Taylor Swift showed up too, <laughs> <laughs> and Jerry Diefenbach played with her. Is that crazy? So it was like uh, all these amazing people showed up to raise money for the Stonewall Inn. I made a TikTok today with the Stonewall all because we were at a staff meeting. I saw that. Yeah. It that was, was so awesome. Yes, because we do understand the assignment. Chris Haley has joined us. Hi, Maria. Go uh, got to see you. Yes, Chris Haley. Good to see you. Juliet Seymour. Oh, my God. My friend from London who was here last Wednesday. She, uh, she was visiting New York, and she came in with our friend Evie. Jet lagged, rainy London town, but it was nice to meet you last week. Sweetheart, sweetheart. Liz Goldenberg says, Gavin was one of the good ones. So wonderful beyond all his talent. He was so sweet to Myrna and Neil. I can imagine that. He was very sweet to everybody at the Stonewall Inn. And not one person had anything but wonderful things to say about him. So uh, Gene Simpson says, I saw the TikTok. Great, Gene. I love it. Okay, so...
Maria, when can you, I just say that you said little girl about well, Taylor Swift, like oh, yeah, Italians just, say a little snack. Right. A little girl. A little snack. Ooh. Yeah. Me and Rena, we're always putting little snacks together. Um, okay, <laughs> so I had a wonderful conversation with a wonderful man this week who is a producer, and I could not believe, I couldn't write fast enough, how many things he is producing right now and how many things he has produced. So we've been really dying to get him on, and um, the stars aligned. Uh, th this week, the stars aligned, and it just happens to be that his birthday is this Sunday as well, same day as Kamala. Woohoo! It's... it's uh, it's kismet that we would have him on tonight. So, Leo, can we please zoom in? Adam Weinstock, yes. please. Da, 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 da. Da, da, da. Places, please. I don't up in the back. Hi, honey. How are you? I don't in the back. Hang on a minute. I'm good. Okay. So yeah. we were we were zooming in. Uh, we were checking Adam's connection. Yeah, that's better. Or, that's much better earlier, and he was on another Zoom for I'm sure something. Also very important. Yeah. So you're like, uh, you're juggling a million things all the time. Real though. Yeah, I love it. So now, Adam, we had a, first of all, welcome and happy birthday week, honey. Oh, birthday week. Yes, you have, to, <laughs> actually it's birthday month. Libras celebrate all month. I do. Yeah. It's Absolutely. A it's Absolutely. A I had a, a beautiful lunch today. Oh, Maria, you'd love this. There's this place called Refuge. And yeah. they have an Alfredo shrimp spinach pizza. That is right up my alley. How did you know? I don't know. A gentilly, you know. That is right up my alley. I love everything. It's so you good. Said. I oh, love that. It's so good. My, and it's so it's so good. My mother used to make a like a clam pizza, like a white clam sauce, and put it on pizza. And it was absolutely delicious. Lynn Portis has checked in. That's how oh, I met. She is a brilliant woman. I love that woman. Well, I call her Lynn Portis genius. Genius. She um, it, actually, it, she said, oh, you have to meet Adam Weinstock. You're going to love him. And I know you guys are really good friends, and she's always raving about you. She's such a good friend. She's she is. She's such a good person. She's and, just delicious and so talented and so creative and so patient with people. I, I just, She's a special person. Yeah, I agree. That's you, Lynn Portis. We all feel that way. I agree. All right, let's get to it because there's so much to talk about. Adam, I I I I almost want to say I want you to start because oh. I know well, let's start with where I was. I was in this meeting on an on I, I, I left a non for profit board. Okay. Because, you know, I put in like my twelve years on this non for profit board. And I love their mission statement. I love what they do. It's twelve years in the non for profit world, showing up and you know, when you're on a board you donate. Mm -hmm. time and it, it just it it was time to move on and there were things in the theater world that just getting to me so i was like i gotta go mm -hmm. and and it's fine and you know what i'm gonna donate i told them i'd be available to be on a committee if they need me mm -hmm. and the day i made the decision to leave that board a commercial theater uh from la and they're called oh gosh let me see let me make this small real quick they're called artco artco and it stands for like, it, 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 it stands for something like in a line, something in alignment. And it's a new, it's a whole new group of people and they all have a lot of credits. And, you know, I brought something to the meeting because they're um, doing something called Showstoppers in November. And I was able to bring something new and important and valuable. So I'm, I'm happy with that. That's, it's just a very cool new chapter but you, new have, you you always have a lot of plates spinning that is for sure that's kind of how your life goes right can i just tell you i just heard that reference about plate spinning the other day yeah it's become part of my vernacular i think i need to have like one big plate and not so many little ones <laughs> but, you know, yeah. it's easier it's easier said than done because i'm opening a show thursday in provincetown for women. okay why don't we start that we'll start with that show that's pretty cool Okay. This is a brilliant comedian, and she is, I don't know if you'd call her a monologuist. She's, she reminds me of so many people, and she, her name is Susan Jeremy, and about 20 years ago, 
she became a teacher because she'd been fired from every other job. And she did a show called PS 69. And it was brilliant. I even brought it to the high school. I brought it to Provincetown. I think it played La Mama. It played all over the country. She played all the parts in a public school system. Wow. And she did it brilliantly. They each had a different spine, whether it was the gym teacher or the principal or the kids. Miss, don't let him chop in his bed so he don't come back. It was just, she has a million voices. And PS 69 was brilliant. And she even brought it to my school for a staff development. Mm. <laughs> um, so it's 20 years later she's just retired from teaching and she's written this play called Robert Will Show You the Door Tales of Being Fired and it goes through every job she had since like a teenager from working first in Arthur Treacher's wow. to like working at Belmont Race Park to working in an Italian bakery <laughs> and just getting fired fired, 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 that's it, that's it and she's just adorable and charming. Mm-hmm. And after Provincetown, Thursday, Friday, Sat, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, birthday, Sunday, she's gonna come home. And then in November, it comes to New York, where it's gonna play for two weeks at La Mama. Wow. Which is kind of cool. That's really cool. You know, I mean, La Mama can get reviewed. You know, a lot of off Broadway shows, or off, off. She's gonna call it off. Yeah. It's kind of off, off. No, but I, I, would call, I would call that off-Broadway. La Mama, absolutely. Then we shall call it off-Broadway. I'm going to call it that. Okay. And it's, well, it's famous. You know, it's, it's infamous. Yeah. Um, it looks really good. They've, they've redone it. Um, they've been doing theater for 50 years. So I'm working with people who've been around. I had a show at La Mama from the Tennessee Williams Festival bunch of years ago and that was with Mink Stoll and Everett Quinton and that was special you know wow. I, that's Harvey Weinstein got Trojan Trilogy done at La Mama that's where that's that correct. started as well that is correct yeah hey, listen, I think Robert can show you the door should go to repertory companies anytime like there's a, a small repertory company like San Diego rep or New Jersey rep like these repertory theater companies that have a season and yeah. God forbid something can't happen. Here's this one woman show, boom, done. You know, piece of cake. Yeah, and also they're they're I mean they're also very smart shows to do because it's not a lot of people involved. Right. It's She's one person. Show. Yeah, and that's I mean I think one per, personally I love one people shows. They fascinate me. I we when we were talking the other day, um, when I first moved to the city, we can go on a date, Maria Gentili. We can go I, to. I'm we, telling you. You and I, we can go to, and maybe uh, maybe our Lynn Portis will join us. We'll go to La Mama and we'll see the show. Oh, my God. I can't. I, I, that I, would be a lot of fun. And then when the show does come to La Mama, just remind me and we'll put a, we'll put a, a digital poster up on our wall. Oh, brilliant. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I love that. Oh, look at Lynn plate spinning. I know. Um, there's but, a brilliant one-person show at 59 East 59th Street right now. That's a show I brought to Dublin in 2022. It's by a fellow named Jim Hyman. Like, he's like a Lynn Porter's type person. He's the kindest, sweetest, most talented. Just, he's just, he's just darling. And this is called What Doesn't Kill You. I'm not really involved in the producing. I'm trying to help. They don't listen to me. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't write a check. They, they, they I'm trying to help. And, you know, nobody hates you more than when you try to help them. So yeah. um, it's a wonderful show. It's about a heart attack, a concentration camp, and share. So what? Yes, a comedy. I know, it's brilliant. And Jim plays all these roles. See, that's what I love, people that play all those roles. And, and, like Susan. Uh, and, but and, I'll have to tell you, it, it, it's playing for in October at 59 East 59th Street, Studio C. Oh, so yeah. Only 48 seats, but... Jim, and he he has some slides. He doesn't even need them, but they're charming. And it's it's just a charming show about figuring out about a teacher, uh, life, getting married. I don't know. It's charming. And it, it I like that. Sunday. And the name of that show is? That one is called What Doesn't Kill You. What Doesn't Kill You. I love that by Jim Heinemann, directed by Susan Barabas of New Jersey Rep. 
Man, oh, I love it. That's who it produces. Batsy Lawrence is producing it. And a gentleman from London who's here now, Mitchell somebody. Really nice. Really nice people. I wish them a lot of luck. And, and speaking of London, you have a show that's that you've produced in London as well, right? Right now, um, we have Back to the Future running in London. We have Back to the Future running in New York. I love now, my it. involvement with it, it sounds bigger than it is, but yeah, it's not there. You know, that's on the Adam Weinstein website. If you go to the Red Spear website, Leo, redspearllc.com, I'm sure Back to the Future is on that. Okay. This is my new private one, Adam Weinstock Productions. I'm like a former student does all my like websites. Yeah, but why not? Leo does uh, all our websites. There it is. So back to the future, go down a little, Leo, or is it just a still shot? Are you on the website? There it is. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, back to the future now. Yes. And that's in London and New York. We wow. have Eisenhower, which was off Broadway last year. The delicious Lynn Portis went to see that. That's at the only theater now in Maryland. We extended before we even opened. What? Now, so explain that to me, because you said that. To explain what that means. You extended I, I, before you even opened. First of all, was I interested in the next white Republican cis male play? I was not. <laughs> However, <laughs> Eisenhower, what he did was, I mean, he got he 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 he, he got all these highways built. He was he he was a military man. He was supposed to run as a Democrat first. Yeah. So we talked about being middle of the road, and people might right. call him too wishy-washy. He's like the middle of the road is what gets everything done. If you're too extreme, you wind up in a ditch. And the things he said about go read every book, go to your library and read every book. The book burners are trying to ban. Wow. It's, it's, I mean, think about that. How so? My friend Liz Goldenberg says my parents saw Eisenhower at Olney and raved about at the Olney, not in New York. At the Olney, yeah, it's great. It's just great. And there's a it's a one person show. Yeah, does play some characters. It's basically a brilliant actor named John Rubenstein. John Rubenstein was the original Pippin. John Rubenstein I love that. pops up everywhere. He was like a gynecologist on Friends. He was on Barnaby Jones. He was, it was in the uh, the recent was it um I can't remember it's uh, Tabitha no it's some some witch series on Netflix I mean there it is playing like uh, Daniel Webster John pops up everywhere John I Webster. love that and and Eisenhower now I I go and I want to go back to what you were talking about Eisenhower being that middle of the road guy you know it, it, so he had so much you're right he was a military man his middle of the, got those things built you know what else he is known for saying when people were trying to focus on this is way back in the well, i guess what was that 50s or early mm -hmm. 50s right yeah so, uh yeah Two yeah years. kennedy came in after him yeah so there was a lot of hubbub about gay people in the military and all that right Do you know what, Eisenhower. yeah but listen to what he one of the top women in the military that was kind of known to be gay. He said, "Oh no, there's no way that I'm taking her out. Well, there there's no go. way that I can replace someone his, like that." His, his, so his, that was his way of saying, "You know what? You're gonna have to move past this." Right. There's, and there, and there's a book that Bruce Valance told me about called like Ike's Mystery Man, which is this guy who was a bachelor for all those years. You know, come on. And, yeah. and, and I mean, and they were all hypocrites. McCarthy, McCarthy, and and. Who was that that little weasel from that lawyer guy? Uh, I can't quite remember, but they Boom. Ray, Ray Cohn. Yeah, yeah, they were all hypocrites. You know, at least I wasn't a hypocrite. You know, there was the pink scare where you were a commie or you might have been gay. That was the times I think if Ike was around now, he would accept people as people because that's what Mamie did. That's what yeah, his mother it was did. A different time. You know, his best friends was the person of color. He he integrated the army. Yeah. Exactly. And he made, and he, um, when FDR passed away, there's a moment in the play, he goes, uh, someone was talking to him. He goes, you know, it was so hard to deal with the loss. He goes, uh-huh. He goes, and where were you? He goes, I was in Europe dealing with another kind of loss. Right. And he made them take pictures of everything in all the concentration camps 
So nobody could say, oh, they weren't that bad, and nobody could ever deny it. Well, right. you know, there are deniers, but so wow. it's one of my favorite experiences today being involved with Eisenhower. Yep, I love that. And people are commenting here left and right about that. Uh, a few people have seen it, they really loved it. So that is right now playing in Maryland, right? Yes, it is. Okay, wonderful. So that is Eisenhower. So if that comes to a theater near you, definitely. Don't, yeah. You know, maybe when I put myself on hiatus in December after this La Mama thing and after I've done this show and that show, I'm going to take a little break for the winter months, cook. Yeah, you know, I was going to say, what do you do when you, when you take a break? What's your break like? What does that look like? You know, I take a break. I go shopping. I do the laundry. I get the car fixed. I pay the bills. That's my yeah. thing. But, you know, like everybody else. Yeah. But yeah. Um, I'm really going to take a producing break in December because, you know, that's not when you're bringing something to fruition uh, in January. And look, I really want to get one or two passion projects for the spring. And I think I know what they are. Well, I might as well tell you. Um, that's why we're here. There's a film I'm working on called Kent State. Wow. And there's never been a Kent State film. There might have been no, a TV has. movie. And um, Alec Baldwin's in it, believe it or not. He signed wow. on before this whole Rust thing. He's yeah. playing President White, the gentleman who let the guns in the army on campus. So if his people are smart, they'll spin it where I let a gun onto my set. Look what happened. It's dangerous. This guy let guns onto campus. Look what Ooh. happened. It's dangerous. You know, if they're smart, they'll spin it. I actually think him being in a movie about a shooting on a campus will propel my little, little, the budget's twice what I signed on for. Uh, but it's still low. Um, I think everyone's going to hear about Kent State. We have William H. Macy with Dermot Mulrooney. Wow. They have office that we're, we're nearly cast and we're nearly funded. But there, there were these, you know, setbacks, you know, the pandemic, the writer strike. So it's been. So it's been in the works for a while. Mm -hmm. yeah. We should be filming um, the spring, summer. So maybe that'll be. And the other one is a. Uh, a show that's going to off Broadway. Um, it's by a gentleman named Drew Droge. I think I'm saying it right. He's been around, and uh, it's called Messy White Gaze. I don't know how much I'm allowed to talk about it, but it's just, it's just so funny. How many people are in that? Is that like a four people? I think it's six, and they're just they're all awful people. There's not one redeeming quality about any of them. It's just so, and it's very, it's got a little bit of that O'Mary humor to it. Yeah. You know, it's kind of like Boys in the Band, where there's this one guy who makes these quips. Um, his husband happens to be a policeman of color, but you, know, you never see him on stage. And I think we should open that one up, hopefully, around Pride. So, you know, we'll be in the parade and you'll hear about it. I think Messy White Gaze is going to become part of the vernacular, like Crazy Rich Asians. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Yeah, and you know what? I mean, you probably know this better than anybody. You never all, you don't always know what's going to hit and what isn't going to hit. I mean, what, what do you go by as uh, someone that's done this for a long time? What is usually. Well, I know. I kinda, I'm, I'm always hoping to make a little money from the theater, but yeah. there it is. Uh, <laughs> good. So it's out there. Did you find oh. that on your own or you found, or I said that to you, Leo. Leo probably found that on you his own. I mean, it's just... He's amazing. Yeah, yep, there you go. Yeah, um, Leo's amazing. There's nothing on Kent State, though, right? I should have said something like that. So um, Kent State is a movie that'll, that'll be out, what, uh, maybe in a year or so? Kent State? Well, we haven't started filming yet, so film uh, 2026. And when those campus uh, protests were going on a few months ago, I was like, because my yeah, nephew doesn't yeah. know from Kent State. The reason I got involved with Kent State is someone in my high school was one of the four kids that got shot. His name is Jeffrey really? Miller. And Jeffrey Miller's mother, I remember her speaking to my class when I was a student. And then I became a teacher in that high school. And I remember her speaking to my students. Wow. And I said, Mrs. Miller, I remember when you spoke when I was a student. It was like a 10 year difference. When I was 18, she spoke when I was a senior. And when I started as a teacher, I don't know, 28, she spoke. Now all the parents of the kids are gone. There it is. 
Oh, oh I love that, Leo. Oh, Leo, you are on the money. You should come oh, work you, with me. No, you don't have no idea. Leo is a gun for hire. He Actually, Leo, you're in L.A., right? Yeah, he's in uh, close to his Idlewild, up in the mountains, like near Palm Springs. I'm by Palm Springs. Springs. I have to send you something on our code. There's something going on called Showstoppers, and then we're going to do something called "Is it anybody can anyone can whistle?" And I think, Ooh. I think, oh god, what's her name? I never remember. I think Jennifer Holiday's taking the lead role. Oh wow! Because it's kind of like her name will be above the top. Like it was really smart. Like she got right back to uh, the guy who called her, and they were like, "Yep, she's interested. Yep, she'll do it." And like. So that's not announced yet. You're not going to find anything on that, Leo. You're not going to find <laughs> the Maria Gentili Leo scoop. Jennifer Holiday will be in L.A. starring in anybody. Anyone can whistle. Yeah, or me and my baby. Wow. I don't know which one it is. I love that. Now, uh, also, Pilly Bianchi says, who's our friend? She's a songwriter and a, and she's also uh, an author and uh, does so. She's been on the show. She says Leo is the best. Yes, he is. Uh, Pilly has a great book uh, about her. It's about her dad's dog, Chaser, the Wonder Dog. And I highly recommend it. I love that book, P Pilly. I bought it for a bunch of people. Uh, but anyway, Leo is her dad's best. dog? Her dad's dog, which was the most famous dog in the United States for a while, because the dog mm -hmm. knew something like 2,000 words, maybe more. Chaser, the Wonder Dog. If you look it up, it. It'll uh, come he's outside and he's outside guarding the yard because there's like a possum who walks along the fence at night. I saw and your post and that's so your dog. What kind of dog do you have, Adam? Baxter is a rescue and he's a Karen Terrier, so he's a Toto. He's like Toto. Oh but my he God. really okay. looks like a gold Westie. Now, okay. if Leo can go to my Facebook page, I am sure there is a beautiful picture of Baxter out there, but not the one where from the back. <laughs> but it's way probably buried in my Facebook. Um, yeah, I so, uh, so, so you, you, know, you can't get more different, Gentilly, than Eisenhower and Back to the Future the Musical. I mean, it's a one person show, drama, yeah. Back to the Future the Musical, you know, $17 million Zemeckis Hollywood money thing with, 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 with the whole cast from the movie show. I mean, they couldn't be more different. Um, so, you, see, you, cut, you know, you go through these things, would you produce a show that you don't really like? But it's going to make a lot of money. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Would you produce a show that you're in love with that might not make a lot of money? Yes. <laughs> so it's very, it's really tricky. Um, last week I was in Provincetown and I had a show called, so Leo's probably looking for a picture of back then. I, I know. Now called, he's I, had a, I had a show called Sauna Boy. S-A-U-N-A. -A. Sauna Boy. Sauna Boy. And what's that about? It was about working in a gay sauna. And oh this guy God. was a delight. He is like if you're doing a one person show and you're pushing a rock uphill with a with a talent, yeah, you gotta go. Sauna boy, I would bring him to Palm Springs. Well, yeah, where go down? Where, where's Sauna boy? Red room. Uh, there he is. Look at that. All right, and wow. that was Leather Nate's weekend. We did just fine. Uh, I think we could have come. I think more people should have went. Um, it's I I I think they're gonna have us back. And he plays all the parts in a gay sauna, and it was just, it was. See, I, I love fun. that. Again, all the parts. Oh, that's back. How good looking is he? He's a good oh, looking. my God. He's adorable. He does yeah. look like a gold Westie. Right. People ask me if I dyed that dog. And then oh. there were a couple of people who know from Karen's. Oh, look at all the pictures. There's What Doesn't Kill You, my friend James's show. Um, uh, I recommend it. Yeah, Baxter's outside patrolling. He'll be out for it. He well, can be out. That's in, it. In this weather, when the leaves fall, that's his favorite. He can be out for hours. When it's yeah, hot, I love that. Cold, yeah. He's yeah. A that's just dog. So now let me go back and ask you. So you said you were a teacher. So uh, what? Because I'm a teacher too, and Leo's a teacher as well. What did you teach? Did you teach many different things? That were you involved in theater? What? I was the drama teacher. Okay, so that's what I'm. I was hoping for. I and was. I ran the high school radio station, which was brilliant. Wow. The high school had a radio station, WPOB, and it was it was on FM and on and then online. So I wrote the curriculum for three radio courses and it changed, it kept changing. First it was like P 
people would come at the, whenever they wanted, and then we had the courses, and then they would come on their free period. It was really interesting. And I wrote three different courses. It was Radio Fundamentals, Radio Production, Radio Daily, where we did the news. And it would take us a week to do a news broadcast. And I have kids who are like, one of my kids is working for MSNBC. Oh, one that's so kids, great. One of my kids is working for the True Barrymore Show. One of my kids was, is associate producer on The View. So wow. she gets like, likes from like on her Instagram from like Megan McCain and Whoopi Goldberg. And I'm like, okay. Wow. So they all went on to, to continue to do what they were doing. I with have you. ruined a lot of lives that I'm very oh, happy about. Actually, wow. Sean met his wife. Another one of my friends met his wife. I used to teach in Radio Fundamentals class a rock opera unit in May and June. Keep those kids in their seats. The way you would teach a Shakespeare. And I taught Tommy. Oh, I love that. I love Tommy. Right. But the original and the wall. Right. And they didn't know from it. These kids were born in like. 2000. Well, that's 90. the thing. So that's the war came out. So the, those goose stepping hammers and those that symbolism, like they were like freaked out. And they it was were blown I don't know if I can show it today. Probably not. Probably some kids would be triggered by the things in Tommy and the Wall. So teaching. Yeah, I can see that. But you know what? It was so brilliant. I loved Tommy. Okay, the, and then they go put on their headphones and listen to the worst. I know. I know. Uh, well, listen, I, I teach as well, so I get it. And now yeah. it's like, it's almost a, a thing they use when they don't want to deal, when they don't want to teach. Yeah. I felt uncomfortable in Miss Gentilly's class. And guess what? It's a kid who hasn't done their work for a whole quarter. Right, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah, I know. It's a very slippery slope now. But you found Broadway Shows, huh? Oh, it is one for my baby. And Ellen, look at this gentleman. Oh, like Leo. Leo's so this, this new board I'm on. And they're doing something called Broadway Showstoppers. That's coming up. And then the season, like they have this really interesting mission statement, finding and reviving old chestnut, old classics, and doing something new. So, oh, my hair back is catching me. I don't know which one Jennifer's going to be in. It's either one for my baby or anyone can whistle. I'm, I don't know which one it is. Probably one for my baby. Can you make a mission statement bigger? Can you read it, Leo? It's, it's a really cool statement. Professional musicals, concerts, and new works in venues of all sizes in the Los Angeles area. All Roads Theater Company, Art Co. All Roads Theater Company. Oh, Committed to diversity that. program. Right, right, right. Right, a little bit of everything. I love that. Right, so and it's not like they're plastering, you know, um, a land acknowledgement or like, we'll cast everybody. Like they're not bragging. They're just going to do it. <laughs> I love that. They're just, yeah. Hands on Tommy and the wall are, Pilly says Tommy and the wall are classics. We need these back in schools. Pilly, uh, you know, there was so much symbolism and so much foreshadowing and so many characters represented things. It was as, oh, cause I also taught English. So I was an English teacher. I was the drama teacher. I would teach public speaking and three three classes of radio. So three of my five classes were radio one, radio two, radio three. And I had an English class or a theater class or a public speaking class. But I was able to teach these rock operas as if they were 1984 or Romeo and Juliet. I would say, what right. are their relationships? And the kids would write an essay. And it was great. I loved it. I loved it. I lo and the kids, yeah, they remember. Yeah, of course they remember. And it, listen, all the stuff I learned in high school, especially from teachers like that, where they they were on that, they had their finger on the pulse of stuff that was so, it, it was m modern and yet it was out there. It was risky for them to teach it in the first place. Mm -hmm. When they did it, you were glued in. I were not show any in. of the films. No, I know. I did a Howard Stern lesson. I would show private parts of the film, which is a lovely film. It's a great broadcasting film. Um, but I'd be, I would be fired today. <laughs> See, that's the yeah. There's a lot of stuff right now that it's just you have to. I think the pendulum's gonna is gonna swing back at some point, especially in the arts. Go ahead. Never hurt anybody. He's got me now. He's got me the KNBC. It was brilliant. It was so funny. But there are some very you know, uh, uh, R-rated moments. And it's not that R-rated, probably PG-17, but still. Yeah. And the kids would yeah. love it, but they'd go home and tell the parents, and then I'd be in the office. Right. Well, they'd go home and turn on their parents' face. I used to say to a kid all the time, and I've heard from kids 
remember what you said to me? I go, did I tell you you have a good face for radio? Yeah, and my friend said, it was so funny. I go, I said that today. <laughs> the kid was there. Oh, that Mr. White's like, so funny. He told me I have a good face for radio. And the parents would be like, right. should be talking about our child's looks? Do you think he should be talking about our child's looks? Be in right. the office. Why did you do that, Mr. White? Are you a comedian, Mr. White? Are we trying to make our kids feel comfortable? Why would you do that? Right. Because it was I know. funny. I know. You know, I, you know what we need? I wish there was a way we could bring back Joan Rivers. I wish there was a way. You know, it's almost like there's a movie there, right? Where yeah. someone is, it, let's say it's a teacher. There's a plot right there. And then they, the ghost of Joan Rivers reappears. And that's, um, funny. that's really funny. Judy Gold should do it. Judy Gold Ooh. could, could really, yeah. Where she, she had really a show. Funny. She had a show at 59 East 59th Street. And it was called, Yes, I Can Say That. And there were people that walked out, you know, like she would piss off some, someone, but she was like, I'm going to say it. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I had a discussion with a young gay boy many years ago who's just whatever you said he was uh, uncomfortable with. I said, you know, what? You, if you're going to be gay and you're new at this, I, I just do me a favor. I got some homework for you. This was at the Stonewall when I was bartending, so I wasn't mm -hmm. teaching. I said, you need to go back and watch as much Joan Rivers as you could possibly stand. That Then you can say, I'm a gay man. Because I, what I get in trouble done with some of my trans friends because they get so angry about if someone doesn't understand something or if there's a point they're trying to make, and they're just so... so uh, uh. However, so I have a couple of trans friends who are the most grounded, beautiful people in the world, too, because they've really taken a look at themselves. Right. They had to figure out some things. Yeah. But there are some that wake up angry, and the world is going to get them right away. And the, Of course, it's, it's self-fulfilled prophecy. That, and it is kind of true, too. they 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 got to fight for who they are right yeah. away, and I don't have to, so. Yeah, you know. I know. It's a, it, You know, I think we're, we're in a... Yeah. We're in a learning place. Everybody says you do you, but then there's a whole coalition of people say, but not you. Right. <laughs> so, what would they have done with Don Rickles or George Carlin at this time? Oh, George yeah, Carlin. Everything he said came true. Everything. It, I've been watching some. Uh, Judy is really, my girlfriend is really uh, loves him. And sometimes she'll play stuff that that he said. And I'm like, that could have he could have said that today. He was so ahead of his time, and he pissed off a lot of people. But he, but he was, was such a sweet him. man. I got yeah. to meet him at Latinos Anonymous way back oh, in the really? day. And what, what he says is true. He's like, what he does on stage, he does on stage. But when you meet him, he loves the indi he yeah. loves the person, not what the group of people do when they get together. Right. Yeah. That's uh, funny, because Stone has become quite the interviewer. He had Mrs. Clinton on. He had uh, he had Kamala on, and what he was saying, he was so smart. I mean, he's learned something in his six, whatever, eight years of interviewing people. And you know, he's not asking these brilliant women what color their underwear are, like he right. did. When he was like thirty. He's asking them some very poignant questions. He goes, yeah. You? And, you know, and and I'm like, wow. Well, look, you know what? I I think that if we are true artists, we do continue to evolve. I I I can only hope that. And I think that he's one of those people, you know? Yeah. Um, I, I think he's continued to evolve. Like, I, I think we all go through certain phases. Of look at some of our comedians, someone like Jon Stewart or Margaret Cho. What oh they my say God, is so, I mean, they're, 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 they're like brilliant. They, they, they take it to Congress. It's almost like some of the politicians are comedians, and the comedians are the smarter than the Yeah. Yep. You know what? I got a, a, When I first moved to the city in 1990, my first job in the city, I worked at a place called the Olive Tree Cafe, and it was the comedy cellar and was attached to it. It's all one owner and the Cafe Wa. And I worked at all three clubs. And John Stewart was just starting out as a comedian. And I can tell, I used to list all those comedians, all of all these people that are famous now were just starting out. John Stewart was probably the nicest one of all of them. He dated one of the waitresses and he was a gentleman beyond all gentlemen. And that's how I remember him as this young, beautiful blue eyed man that just was such a doll. And then he became famous, obviously. And he and discovered Steve Carell and Steve Carell was in my second city class for me. Wow. Wow. He hasn't made it like I have, but he's doing okay. Still, listen, one can only hope. 
So, I doubt he remembers me, but I remember that Steve Grove was in my class. There was a little something special about him, too. Like, even when we had the homework assignments at Second City, you know, make something a musical that never was a musical or, you know, like that, and, or, or come up with this and come up with that. You could, Steve had that little spark. Yeah. I, yeah. Some people just do. All right, we're going to take a moment. We have to do the food section of our show. Can I let Baxter in the house? Yes, of course. You go let like Baxter. Seconds. Yeah, take your time. All right, so uh, Pilly says, Joan, yes, please, Joan Rivers. Oh, my God, right? You never forget your mentor, she said. I agree, Pilly. Uh, Lenny Bruce says, John. All right, so what do we make? Bruce. Tonight, I didn't have a chance to cook. My, my main meal because I came to Jersey. And so what I did instead was I went to mm. Whole Foods and this, I mean, I would have cooked this myself. It's so delicious. Bow ties with um, mushrooms, parsley, some uh, crushed walnuts, which I think are delicious. It, it smells like a little bit of garlic and olive oil, just very simple. And it's a cold salad, but that is what I'm eating for dinner tonight. I love bow tie pastas. One of my Me favorites. too. Well, they call it bow tie. Uh, the Americans call it bow tie. The Italians call it farfalle, which farfalle. means farfalle, which means butterflies. Actually. Oh, okay. So, yeah, farfalle is a butterfly. Farfalle is plural, so that's. Um, <clears throat> so, Can I get some butterflies yeah. with my meatballs? Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, th doesn't that sound good, Pill? So that's what I'm having. And then this, you know, I've been trying up until the election, I've been trying every single week to put something blue in there. So this week I made a delicious salad of mixed greens. A lot of it is romaine. Then for Tim Waltz, I always put something purple in there. So I have purple cabbage and purple onions. And then I have blueberries, fresh blueberries, mm -hmm. and blue cheese crumble. And I'm going to put a classic... Um, the I love this Fini uh, balsamic vinegar that you get at Whole Foods. It's delicious. So I'm put that and a, um, a just a regular uh, Tuscan olive oil. So Maria, do you put onions on your salads? I do. I like it. I like onions a lot. Which uh, which oh, which uh, what flavor or what color onion do you use? I tend to go with salad? the purple for salads. I tend to go with the purple for cooking. I go with Vidalia, always Vidalia because they're sweet. And if you can find them, if you can't always find a good Vidalia onion, but in the winter, you have to go to the Peruvian onions. They're Vidalia mm -hmm. onions, but they're just, they're grown in Peru. So um, did you find Baxter? Baxter's in. Okay, good. Now I did for my dessert because of you. Hi, so we're having lobster oh. tails. I did cut it in half because otherwise it would have fit. But here's what I'm going to do because it is your birthday Sunday as well as um, Kamala yeah. Harris's birthday. And Snoop so, Dogg. And, and Snoop Dogg, that's right. So we are, everybody, we're going to sing happy birthday to Adam and Kamala in that order. And then, Adam, you're going to blow out the candles. So happy birthday to you. Come on, Leo. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. To you. Happy birthday. Happy dear birthday, Adam. dear Adam and, and Kamala Dog. and Snoop. And Snoop Dogg. Happy birthday. Happy to birthday you. to you. All right. Blow it out, Adam. Oh, yeah. Wow. That was good. Adorable. Wow. Beautiful, honey. Yes, we have to celebrate your birthday. It's a bit, and, and I, I, it's same day as Kamala. Come on. That is good luck. Yeah. So, um, okay. We have three minutes left to our show. First of all, thank you, sir, for joining us, taking the time out of your busy schedule. And thank you for sending us all that great promo stuff that we could pull up. Leo, mm. thank you for going, as always, above and beyond the extra mile. A deep diver. Yes, he is. And I will tell everybody, everybody knows, Leo does all my promo stuff. He does maintains my website. He created our website, but what's the story with Maria? He maintains the mariagentilly.com. But he also makes amazing videos, promos. So it, he is a gun for hire. If you need anything done, reach out to Leo Rodriguez on Facebook. You will find him and he can make it happen. So now how far Adam, are you from Leo? How far are you from LA? I'm I'm actually close to Palm Springs. I'm in the mountains that overlook Palm are Springs. You? Yep. I want to bring Sauna Boy to Palm Springs. I would like to see it. And then right, right, right. Springs that's, is pretty hot there. 
See, that's what producing is, Maria. You find the right show for the right area. Oh, yeah. We go to Bay Palm there. Springs makes a lot more sense than, you know, Robert will show you the door. And Bobby, oh, but right. No, but it's we didn't cool. even get to talk about Reefer Madness. Reefer Madness was a blast. I was so happy to be involved. Um, it was Christian Campbell and his wife, Amerika. It was really their mm-hmm. first time taking the, the reins of producers. We learned a lot. I think it should go to London or Brooklyn <laughs> or Vegas. That's, that makes like a lot of sense. Right, right. Because because uh, I can see all the Jesus numbers in Vegas. New York right now are the budgets are outlandish. Yeah, I can imagine everything is through the roof. Um, Maria, okay. there's a there's a show that's opening. It's nearly a six million dollar budget off Broadway. Oh my god! <laughs> that's why I said no, 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 not me. Oh, wow. Yeah, but you know what? Sometimes you got to skip stuff. Like, remember when Spider-Man came by? Everybody was jumping on that. And, and nobody made their money back. You know, like, so that's the thing. Some shows sound great. You know, sometimes you got to just lay back. Lay back and wait. If something mm-hmm. sounds like, if it doesn't feel like it's right, it's not right. Mm-hmm. There'll, there'll mm-hmm. always be another show. Okay. Thank you, sir, for coming on. Leo, thank you for everything you do. Now, Adam, I'm going to call upon you on your birthday week. All the people that listen to the show are creatives of some sort. Um, I and Now, this will go into podcast right after this. It, you can always find us, by the way, folks, on you, our YouTube channel, Maria Gentile. Um, what's the story with Maria YouTube channel? Also, all this, the um, podcast, uh, Spotify, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasts, you can find us on that, as well as what's the story with Maria.com. Leo mm-hmm. archives everything. He does all that stuff. So now, Adam, I'm going to call upon you to leave all our creative people with some words of hope about staying in the game. Whatever it is you do, how does a person continue to have, be inspired, have hope, even on the days that aren't so good? Gosh, you just got to keep pushing. You know, the, uh, uh, I'm still doing it. We're all still doing You know, look at our friend Bianca Lee. Bianca Lee was at East Village, under 14th Street, you know, trans, talented person. And now she's on Broadway at 62. Yeah, you I know. know. It's just, it's a, it's, you know, and she, if she's got the right management, she should be able to work this into television appearances, gay pride parade, like grand, you know, you never know. Our friend Penny Arcade, Penny Arcade is another person under 14th Street. 14th Street talent. And I say under 14th Street because there's Broadway and then there's the under 14th Street where Taylor Mac started. Mm. And Penny will say, artists don't sell out. Every once in a while, the rest of the world will buy in. Oh, I love that. Doing, you know, like Warhol who painted a soup can. Like, and then everybody's like, oh, it's brilliant. Listen, you just gotta, you never know. You never know. You never know. You know, maybe somebody in that audience of 10 that you're performing your heart out for is a, a big time producer who wants to bring it to Edinburgh or the next one or the next one. Yeah. And, and you know, I just feel like if you, if you really love something that you do, just keep doing it and, and, and people will love it and enjoy it. And you'll always take pride in you what find you do. different ways to do it. Like I said, I'm going to take a little hiatus and just find two passion projects, not like 12. Right. A little just here and there. Yeah, but that, I mean, even two passion projects on your time off is a lot. So good for you. That means you love what you do. Well, yeah, but you know, if I, if I wish everybody had a teaching career like we did and then a pension so we can do this stuff. Yeah, I know. I and, know. And, well, you know what? 10, being, o'clock on a, 10 o'clock on a, what is it, a Tuesday? Yep. Well, being a teacher is a passion project, isn't it? It's, mm-hmm. That is, Leo knows he's a teacher too. So, and, mm. uh, okay. Accurate. Well, I wish we had more time. And I will say, Adam, you are always welcome to come back. If you have anything you, you, you want to let us know about, um, maybe I'll have you and Lynn on together some night. Ooh, we fun. Oh, you'll never that get a word. Was... You'll never get a word. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I love that. I love that. And thank you for taking the time, my friend. Um, happy New Year. I know it was just a Jewish New Year. So happy New Year. Yeah, birthday, just that. That's so many things happening, and l- fingers crossed, we have 22 days to go. I let's let's just 
keep, keep doing what we're doing. I sent 200 keep postcards. There you go. Leo's got his, and I have my Kamala shirt on today. There she is. And um, let's, I mailed 200 postcards to swing states yesterday to Ohio that I did. Okay. So everybody's doing Hi, Jay Rivera. Things. Hi, Jay Rivera. Hi, Brian Johnson, my friend. And Jean Simpson, Jean Simpson um, is in Indiana and she works, is on the board of a beautiful theater. I think it's the Fisher Theater, is it, Jean? So theater thrives everywhere, no matter where you are. Nice. Um, yes, Adam, you are always welcome back. Everybody go, and, Adam, where can they find you? What What is the name of your website? Just Adam. Oh, uh, oh, 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 oh. Find me on Facebook, Adam Wine. It's actually Weinstock.Productions. Okay, one, Leo already had it up. Look at one. So That's all our I mean, theater people. Me. Red Spears with a business partner. Weinstock is just me. Okay. But so Adam's Weinstock. got, Adam's very smart, everybody. He's got everything on that page. So you can find out his whole world by going to Weinstock. Production. I'm glad you liked that landing page. That was a, a note I got from someone that I was yeah. working with. That, that, that why, why does your website have your bio first? You should have your shows first. I'm like, oh, okay. Great yeah. note. Yep. Great. Thank you, Leo, for everything. Lynn says, Leo is so friggin' fast. Yes, he is. And I love and him. Easy. Wow. And well, and I don't easy. know about that. Jesus. Holy, holy, holy. Okay. Thank you, everybody. We love and appreciate you. Come back every Tuesday at 9 p.m. We are here. Okay. And thank you, Adam. And break a leg with everything you do, honey. Okay. All thank right. you. Bye. Remember, everybody, vote.